want you to uh, perform a bit of a, a leap in time here um, and just wind yourself back to the cinema of, well, not exactly 100 years ago where this piece of music is concerned, but it should sort of set the right atmosphere for what we're about to discuss. If you live in a smaller community, small town, you're unlikely to be able to visit a cinema without having to travel elsewhere. Usually, it has to be said, to perhaps a rather characterless multiplex. But the lucky citizens of Thirsk have got a local cinema that they can visit in their town. Um, and this year, it is celebrating an important anniversary. It's celebrating its centenary. To mark 100 years of the Ritz in Thirsk, the local documentary maker, Sarah McMillan, has put together a film celebrating this remarkable old picture house and she joins me in the studio live this lunchtime. Um, you are a, a filmmaker of some renown. Just reveal how many movies you have made. Uh, about over over 50. I've got about 50 on, online on YouTube. But these are all documentaries? Uh, yeah, they're all documentaries. I'm documenting the heritage and tradition of North Yorkshire and the Cleveland area of North Yorkshire. What, what motivates you to do that? Because, I mean, you're not sort of being... As as far as I'm aware, you're not being paid hundreds of thousands of pounds by some big company or organisation to do it. Well, voluntary-based um, documentaries. And, and what catches your attention about a particular subject that says, right, this is my next project, This is I've got to make something about this? Well, I'm just interested in, in any subject, uh, really, um, due to um, the heritage and the wonderful uh, region that we live in, uh, like the coastal, the rural, and the industrial uh, landscape. Yeah, I mean, it is a fantastic area. Mm. Are you? I mean, you, there have been people in the past, and we've, we've seen series on BBC Two television where you know they've found archive that sort of your equivalents fifty or a hundred years ago decided there's got to be a record of this thing that happened, and you're doing it here in the twenty first century. Oh yeah, absolutely. That's what I'm trying to achieve, really, to create um, an and digital. Uh, um, archive really if you don't film it if a part an event or a tradition is lost and then if you can record it for generations to come really what was your first film what was the first uh, thing that said the first the first film was actually um coastal heritage a journey from Southgate to scarborough and i used to tour around uh, local community groups um it was just a photographic film originally because i started off in photography and which uh, helped raise money for charities uh, with a digital projector in village halls to packed audiences and uh, everyone sort of enjoyed it. And what's people's reaction? Because what happens is, of course, when you're making very local films like this, is that local people see themselves and their events recorded on film. What, what do people say? What, how do they react? Uh, I think they really enjoy it, really. I get uh, a lot of comments from people all over the world, like expats living in Australia, and so oh, how wonderful seeing our local area that I used to live. And yeah, so let's come to the Ritz. Let's just hear a little bit. I think this is from the soundtrack of uh, of the film. So let's just have a yeah. listen. You can tell us more about it. Daddy was a movie man. I was born into show business. My earliest memories are of a silver screen, plush tip-up seats, posters, and paste buckets and the celluloid and carbon smell of a projection room. My father, Walter Power, was the pioneer of the cinema. A man of tremendous charm, he had an uncanny knack of seeming to meet several places at once. He could keep an eye on the projection room and the box office, yet always managed to greet his patrons, making each one, from the one in Thrapney Balcony to the six penny customer, feel like an honoured guest feel like an honoured guest yeah. so i gather from that that was the daughter of walter power so it was actually um a letter given to the volunteers um about her experiences and um and i managed to get uh, a friend of mine who does a lot of narration and been in, appeared in several of my films to actually uh, record um snippets of the actual letter and which brings it to life, really. And I've got a lot of archive film footage on there to bring it to life. And so that wasn't the lady herself. What do we know about Walter Power? He was the, the founder of the, the Ritz Cinema in Thirst. Yeah, well, he came from Darlington. It's actually uh, 
amazing to actually get a cinema at first because it's so very early on in uh, early film making. Yeah, I mean, you know, with all due respect to Thursk, it's a beautiful town, but it's not exactly the centre of the universe these days. And a hundred years ago, to sort of bring this technology of moving pictures to a town like Thursk must have been quite an achievement, really. Yeah, I think it was a, a showman, really. He was a businessman and a, a fantastic showman, and he wanted to to help the community and to entertain them. Let's hear another little bit from yeah. the film. You can tell us tell us about this. Very early days of the cinema in Thurs was due largely to a man called Walter Power. He came from Darlington. He came to Thursk and decided that this would be uh, an ideal spot to set up uh, a permanent cinema. Who is that then? Uh, that's a local historian who's the honorary curator at uh, First Museum, Coop Hardin, and uh, he actually knows all about the, the heritage of, of Fursk and, and the history. And uh, so I managed to get him to, to explain about Walter Power and, uh, and the history of uh, early filmmaking. As a documentary maker, how important is it to you that you fa- you find someone like Cooper Harding who can who can fill in the background? Yeah, I for think you? it's marvellous, really, to meet someone like that who can, you know, be great in front of a camera and uh, and just um, tell everybody how it was, really. Yeah, I mean, we've got the just just round the corner. We've got uh, the University of York St John, and they've got the Yorkshire Film Archive, mm. and they've got sort of acres and acres, hundreds and thousands of hours of Yorkshire films stretching back goodness knows how many years. They're constantly being called on mm. by television companies, by production companies to to have access to that archive so they can make programmes mm. about it. Presumably, in years to come. Your films will be exactly the same. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's what I'm trying to achieve. My website and all my documentaries and all my short films. Uh, my ambition is to uh, gain um, interest for funding. For example, like maybe Welcome to Yorkshire, or um, uh, the BFI, the Creative England, uh, to. Uh, help me develop my talent and uh, make a professional career. Well, I th- certainly think they should come forward and, uh, and, and even if they can't offer you financial support in these, uh, these tough times, they might offer you some, some moral support in what you do. You mentioned your website. If people want to yeah. go and have a look at it, what's the, what's the address? Yeah, it's uh, www.northernlandscapes.org.uk Northern Landscapes. Northern Landscapes, all, all run, one word. All run together yeah. as one word. That's the important bit to remember. Well, I hope you get plenty of sit, uh, hits on your site as a result of a appearing on the programme today. It's been really nice to meet you, Sarah. Carry on doing what you're doing. Was was there one thing, before we finish, was there one thing about the Ritz Cinema um, documentary that you've just finished, um, was there one thing that surprised you or one thing that is the gem in the film that you think, I'm really glad we caught that? The greatness of um, Peter Bow, actually. He was one of the oldest projectionists and he's been there since the 1950s and uh, he was just marvellous on camera and... 35 mil film projection, you never see that anymore now, and it's totally disappeared and now we've got digital. Is your film going to be shown at the Ritz? Yeah, it's going to be premiering tonight just for the volunteers and the people who've starred in it and invited guests tonight. And it's on uh, Monday to Thursday, half seven, before the main feature. And uh, it's going to be on um, throughout the year as well. So if people could just check my website and the Ritz Cinema website... Uh, for more um, dates when it's going to be actually shown. Right, quite a special thing, really. There yeah. can't be many cinemas that you can go to, to the cinema, to watch a film all about the cinema. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> There's actually a trailer on the website as well, if they want to check uh, my website out, there'll be a trailer of the film on there. OK, and Northern, and Northern Landscapes is the key thing to, to look for on a search absolutely, engine. Absolutely, yeah. And if any um, s- um, societies, groups, cinemas, art centres or any other venues would like to uh, book uh, 100 Years at the Ritz Cinema... Uh, to be shown at any of their events, then get in touch with me as well at right. uh, my website. And I'm sure you've sparked one or two people's imagination about other things that need to be recorded. Um, thank you for joining us on the programme. Nice to meet Thanks you. So let's, have, let's have a little bit more of... again to uh, Sarah, Sarah McMillan if you're one of those people who has featured in her documentary 100 years at the Ritz Cinema Thursk and uh, you're going along to the uh, the launch the premiere tonight I hope you thoroughly enjoy seeing about the history of your cinema and maybe even seeing yourself on the big screen and as Sarah said it's going to be shown at various other times Radio York Radio York